Welcome to today's show. On today's show, we're going to discuss rocks and minerals. Hmm, what are rocks and what are minerals? Well, first and foremost, rocks are made of minerals. Rocks can be classified into three categories that include igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Hmm, what is the rock cycle? Well, during the rock cycle, rocks form deep in the earth. They move and sometimes change. Sometimes they migrate to the surface and eventually return below the ground. This movement of rock creates three kinds of rock, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Rocks can actually tell detailed stories about the earth, including its past, present, and possibly its future. Rocks are formed in what is called the rock cycle, a continuous movement of rocks from one type to another. Rocks that come from space and land on Earth are called meteorites. Many meteorites are made of the mineral iron. Minerals make rocks. They're represented by over 4,000 different types. They're found in Earth's crust, but only about 30 of the 4,000 total. Minerals that consist of a single element in its pure state, uncombined with other elements, are called native elements. Minerals that are native elements consist of metals and non-metals that comprise Earth's oldest understood elements. Minerals called silicates are the most widespread minerals. Minerals that are called silicates are incredibly tough and comprise over 1,000 types. That's one-third of all the minerals that we know of. Minerals called precious metals include rare and valuable minerals like gold, copper, silver, and platinum. Rocks sometimes contain a high level of valuable and useful minerals, especially metals. These rocks are called ores. There's a special process that has to take place to extract the metals from the ores. For as long as people have been walking this earth, for many, many, many centuries, people have dug out rocks out of the earth because of the useful minerals that they contain. Minerals have a wide variety of uses. Bismuth. Bismuth is a mineral that helps us when we have an upset stomach. Coal is a source of energy. Limestone is used in cement. And slate is used on roofs. There's tons of uses for minerals. You even eat minerals. Halite is a mineral name for the substance that everyone knows as salt. Its chemical name is sodium chloride. And a rock composed primarily of halite is known as rock salt. That's pretty cool, isn't it? A good question to ask right now is, how are minerals identified from one another? If we're going to accurately identify a mineral, we need to look at its properties. There's five distinct properties that many geologists use to identify minerals. They are cleavage, hardness, color, streak, and luster. So the rock that is located here is called mica. Mica splits into little sheets, almost like a paper. Why? because it has cleavage. Cleavage describes how a mineral breaks into flat surfaces. Thanks to this German mineralogist, Frederick Mohs, we can identify minerals by their hardness. Mohs' scale of hardness grades minerals from one to 10. A mineral with a higher grade scratches those with a lower grade. Now talc is a mineral that is the softest mineral and it is identified with a one. You know, I've heard all kinds of things about diamonds. Diamonds are incredibly valuable. We know that. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. But did you know that the diamond is the hardest mineral on Earth? And it is identified on the Mohs scale of hardness with a number 10. Luster is another property used to identify minerals. Luster describes how light bounces off of a mineral. Some minerals are shiny like metal. They're known as metallic minerals. And others are not shiny like metal and they're known as non-metallic minerals. You know, we often find it easy to observe a mineral's color. Most minerals, they come in one shade or a very similar color to one another. However, some, like quartz, they come in many different colors. Some minerals, like gold and pyrite, are the same exact color, except one is extremely valuable and one isn't. It's probably not appropriate or best practice to solely use color as a property to identify a mineral. So streak is another property that is used to identify minerals. Streak is the color of the powder or residue that is left when a mineral is rubbed or scrubbed across a white tile. Now you need to know that a mineral streak is not always the same color as the mineral itself. You might have heard the vocabulary word 
gems or gemstone before. A gemstone is a mineral that looks very beautiful when it's cut and polished. Gemstones can come in many different shapes and sizes. Some gem shapes include round brilliant, cushion, square, scissors, pear, step, emerald, heart, and oval brilliant. Out of the many known minerals that are on Earth, only about a hundred are considered gemstones. You want to know something that you and I have in common, in addition to your teacher, your parents, and any other human that has ever been born? We all have birthstones. A birthstone is represented by the month in which you were born. What is your birthstone? Mine's a diamond because I was born in April. We could wrap up this broadcast by comparing and contrasting rocks and minerals. Rocks and minerals are both non-living. They both have properties that can easily identify themselves such as color, shape, size, and texture. Rocks are made out of minerals, and minerals are made out of minerals. <laughs> well, that about wraps it up. I want to thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.